Back in the 70s, the heavyweight boxing champion Muhammad Ali used to provoke his opponents by proclaiming, I am the greatest. Now it seems that Ali knew that deep down inside, many of us thought this about ourselves, but few would have the gall or the skills to actually say it in public. Being the greatest among men is not a new desire or problem. For example, Cain killed his brother Abel because he was jealous that his brother might be considered greater in the Lord's eyes because of his sacrifice. And King Saul tried to kill David because he was afraid that the people thought that David was the greater of the two leaders. Even among the apostles of Jesus, there were constant debates about who was the greatest of the apostles. In Luke chapter 22, verse 24, we see that they were still arguing about this point during Jesus' last meal with them before his crucifixion. Each time they fussed about this issue, Jesus would remind them that greatness in the kingdom of God was very different than greatness in the world. He taught them that it was okay to desire greatness, but they had to seek greatness in the kingdom, not the world. They had to follow the kingdom's guidelines for greatness, not the world's guidelines. In the kingdom or the church, Jesus said that those who were great were those who, first of all, became like little children. In Luke chapter 22, verses 24 to 26, Luke writes, and there arose a, a dispute among them as to which one of them was regarded to be the greatest. And he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are called benefactors. But it is not this way with you. The one who is the greatest among you must become like the youngest. You know, children are trusting, straightforward, innocent, and faithful. Examine the Bible and see the ones who ultimately pleased God, and you will find that they cultivated these qualities in order to become great in His kingdom. Number two, you have to become a faithful servant in order to be great in the kingdom. Again, in Luke chapter 22, verse 26, it says, and the leader will become like the servant. In the world, one of the perks of greatness is that you get other people to serve you. In the kingdom, the reverse is true. The greater you are, the more service you render to other people. For example, elders in our church here receive honor from the congregation, but the bonus they get for becoming elders is that they will be asked to sacrifice more of their time and energy into serving other people. The proof of this principle is Jesus himself. He is the greatest and proves it by giving up the most for others, his own life. You know, greatness envy starts more wars in families, and friendships, and nations than anything else. Greatness envy stops when we recognize that Jesus is the greatest. That position has been filled once and for all. And when we are compared to him, we are all like children and servants. So next time you're tempted to be the greatest or envy the great, ask yourself if the greatness you seek will make you great in God's eyes and make you great in the kingdom of God.